Good afternoon everyone, uh, my name is Matt Edmonds and I'm from Pre-Construct Archaeology and I'm going to talk about the Priory of the Virgin Mary and John the Baptist, also known as Hollywell Priory, which is an Augustinian nunnery from foundation to dissolution. Um, as I'm not a historian or sort of med medieval expert, this is going to be an archaeological perspective. But with the fact that we've had investigations on this site over a 30 year period, um, and specifically the last seven years of PCA involvement, there's, you know, there's quite a lot to cover. So the archaeological perspective um, should be an interesting, should be an interesting talk. OK. Um, we're starting off with um, main religious, this map, which is the main religious houses in medieval London. Yeah. Um, and you start to sort of see Hollywell Priory to the yeah, northeast. We've got um, the sister okay. chapel, which is uh, sister yeah. priory, which is also Augustinian, which is St. Mary Clerkenwell. And then we also have the Holy Trinity Priory, which is an Augustinian um, priory over in towards Oldgate. And just sort of located within London, got the River Thames there, um, Shoreditch High Street coming into Bishopsgate, across London Bridge and into Southwark. And then you've got Bermondsey. Abbey over here to sort of the southeast, which um, our colleague Alistair Douglas will talk about later. Um, just to sort of just give a bit of size, I mean, that is a nine acre site, so much smaller than somewhere like Bermondsey Abbey. Um, but still, this is where we'll be focusing this talk. Um, just going to draw your attention to this plaque which is on Curtin, modern day Curtin Road um, in Shoreditch um, put up by the London Borough of Hackney which is where we are and it's the only real visible marker to the presence of Hollywell Priory um, just to sort of the bit of information we've got here this area formed part of Hollywell Priory founded 1152 1158 there's some uncertainty about that foundation date but um, it's around about that time and dissolved in 1539 in the journey, the dissolution. And it was named after a holy well. Um, and it's bounded by Curtin Road, Holywell Lane, Bateman Row and Shoreditch High Street. So hopefully we're going to with this lecture, we're going to find out a little bit more about Halliwell Priory. We will know more about it than just this singular plaque. So this is um, a map of 1922 and it puts it into its setting of some of the streets. So here we've got Shoreditch High Street to the east, Hollywell Lane to the south, Finsbury Field, which is now Curtin Road to the west, and then the Batemans Row. So like I said, it covers about nine acres and um, probably would have had about 13 nuns at its peak and with additional workers sort of helping with maintaining the gardens um and cooking baking sort of maybe a brew house sort of domestic duties so the the nuns can focus on their devotion just a few sort of little bits we've got a church to the south um and then the the rest of the priory to the north that is is a sort of sometimes the church is to the north but in this case we've got it to the south and our excavation our sort of work focuses on this little area um to the south um with a bit of the church and a bit of this sort of piece of land where you've got a gatehouse and a cemetery wall and um, just some some of these sort of details in this kind of part of the of, of the general priory area um, between the out the sort of outer precinct uh, just a quick sort of site location and put it in its modern context we've got Shoreditch High Street to the east again Hollywell Lane to the south and then that is focusing on that sort of um, southeastern area of the, the overall priory. Um, just sort of previous archaeological interventions, just to sort of where we're getting our information from. Um, previously in 1989, um, Barney Sloan, who was working for the Department of Greater London Archaeology, or Dogler, conducted these trenches across the site. Um, and that was the real start of the excavations back in 1989 and sort of part of the works being done. Later, we've got a uh, Museum of London in 2006, carried out three trenches in advance of the London Overground um, East London line, which sort of cuts diagonally across the site. Um, and 
their findings start to build up a bit of a, a, a picture of, of the, the, the Priory Church, which we'll see later. So over to what the works have done PCA more recently in 2019. So the overground viaduct is in place, so it cuts through the site. And over on that western side, we've got um, the advance of a building of a hotel and a residential block, which allowed us to excavate down this the western side of the site. In addition, more, much more recently, in 2019, we did a few trenches to the north and to the south in this area here. These are the areas in, highlighted in yellow, so orange. Um, so we start to build up a real picture of the Dogler trenches, the Mola trenches, the PCA trenches, and our 2019 trenches. And that was more recent. Uh, this area here, which was done in 2020, last year, um, where we've got a, um, a larger area of excavation and over to the east of the overground viaducts, so PCA trenches, sort of site in 2015 to the west, and then over to the east of that overground line with, with this more recent excavation area. Um, so focusing back on that 1922 plan, we're going to look at this sort of area. So we're capturing this bit of the church, this bit of sort of um, outer precinct defined by the, the wall here and then the gatehouse and then the curtain wall to the south. So we're going to sort of see what we find with those excavations, how we build on this picture. And there's a few sort of things that um, worth pointing out. The gatehouse here, the little entrance, but the church overall is quite plain. It doesn't really give a lot of information. It's just a, a rectangular block, but we're going to add to that over the course of this lecture. So here we are, uh, the results of the Mola excavation, one of their trenches here, and the previous 1989 evaluation by Barney Sloan, where we've got a um, cruciform church, um, sort of con conjectured by the north wall they found, or, um, and the south wall, and some columns here. And then they thought they had a bit of the transept based on um, what, Barney Sloan was finding, and a small chapel over here to the west of the transept. But they're starting to build up a picture of how that um, how that church would look from this conjecture. Um, so this was church was like we said was found around 1150, but actually this church what we've got here is probably from 1190, where it starts to take this 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 kind of cruciform shape, and there's a cruciform shape on the church at St Mary's Clerkenwell which is the other, one of the other main Augustinian priories in London. So focusing on the PCA excavations, um, will bring us back to this area here of this 1922 plan with the gatehouse and then the church itself. And that matches kind of the results of those excavations of the 2015 um, excavations where we've got the gatehouse here. We've got a roadway leading up here and each sort of stage I'm going to break this down and go through some of these sort of different parts with the gatehouse, the avenue, the, the south wall with the entrance, the actual church itself, the north wall and then the, um, the western range. So we're, adding, we're starting to add to this very rectangular block, block church. Um, and then onto the gatehouse here um, we've um, got the east-west curtain wall, which we actually had survival of, and then some rooms which form part of the gatehouse, and then the entrance to the gatehouse here, and then that's conjectured, the, the, sort of the curtain walls kind of running off there, carrying off to the east on that side, and the west on that side. And so on to the next slide. Um, and here we are with a photograph of that east-west curtain wall, and then the far room that we sort of looked at on that plan over there to the west, a smaller room here over to the east, and then looking at the gateway kind of coming in here. Um, just a bit of a detail on the outside of the curtain wall on the uh, along Hollywell Lane, we think we've got a, um, a well, this rectangular structure here, we believe is a well, which actually probably is where the, the name Holy Well, it, it kind of gets its name from. Um, there probably was a natural spring on this site and it's been formalised by this well and it's added on to that curtain wall. And here's just an elevation to show you how it's sort of constructed. 
Um, this is a bit more of a, just a sort of an example of that gatehouse. We've got a um, two gateways, which is the main carriageway gate and then a postern gate. And this is an example um, from Bristol, the main entrance to St Augustine, Augustine's Abbey in Bristol. And it's maybe how ours have looked. Obviously, it's a lot more elaborate higher up. We haven't got that sort of information, but we sort of just in terms of a gateway with a, a main carriageway gate and a postern gate, that's how we believe our gatehouse looked for Holywell. And then just focusing on this plan here, um, the avenue that would have taken us from the gatehouse to the church along this western side, we've got we had patches of gravel, which would have been a, a metal surface which forms this this avenue, this routeway um, between the between those two sort of buildings. And then we're getting on to the actual doorway to the church, which we've got surviving in this photograph, um, which we're calling a portico entrance. And um, this is the western end of the south wall. It was built into that south wall. And there was a similar example of a portico entrance at St Mary's in Clerkenwell. And that had a tower extending from that um, um, from from that entranceway. All that sort of we haven't got that. Um, information at the moment to sort of extrapolate that but we're just we, it's quite a nice bit of survival here of this portico entrance um focusing now onto the south wall of the church which has got really nice survival i mean a lot of these walls often survive just with um chalk foundations or they're being gobbed out here we've actually got standing wall um made up of kentish ragstone there's a bit of rygate a bit of carnstone and um quite a rough sort of sandy mortar um, as, a, as a bonding material and then probably on the external face of this wall we did find some render so the, the, the stones themselves probably wouldn't be exposed and um, it was just sort of rendered and possibly painted uh, but it is kind of it's a really good survival of, a, of, a, of the south wall of the church and then onto our church plan so just sort of see what just recap here we've got the portico entrance coming on, to, on fixed onto the south wall um, the south aisle some columns to the south then the nave and then these northern columns and then the north uh, north wall of the church and then the north aisle and then we're getting into the cloister where we've got this um, sort of western wall that sort of defines that cloister alley and some rooms coming off that cloister alley here we have a kind of nice photograph of that survival I'm talking about, that really nice survival with that south wall, portico entrance. Um, we've got the um, columns and then we've got the nave to the sort of north of that. This is kind of um, looking west. And then these cuts here are the graves within that south aisle. So there are bodies buried uh, below the floor within the church itself, which is quite nice. Um, then onto the column bases, um, just sort of not much to say really, but except really good survival. Um, we've got they've got stone pier bases, which you can see here, and they're circular columns with kind of very sort of um, sort of quite a plain column here, but a little bit more of a, an interesting one here. But again, really good survival, sort of nice architectural features, and they would have um, supported the arcade in the South Isle. And here we go, we're looking now inside the church, um, looking south in the north aisle towards the nave. And um, this is a spread of, of Westminster tiles, which is really, really good survival and um, quite an impressive um, thing to find. And there's just this, a bit more detail of those Westminster tile. We think sort of 13th century, um, they've got strong connections with other monastic sites. And they were the common tile type in um, St Mary Clerkenwell, just to give it a bit of context. And actually our spread that we've got here, that we found with, with PCA, was the largest spread of tiles outside of Westminster Abbey. Um, lots of design, typical designs that have been seen before, but we think, and um, our experts think, there's probably one or two that are new and probably not seen in other assemblages. So these are sort of um, items that have probably been added later during this church's life um, as maybe the priory comes into money and benefactors that maybe favour the Augustinian order at, the, at that time sort of donating money and um, they're allowed to sort of add these sort of extra if you like a bit of bit of luxury to the church a bit of nice sort of um, architectural feature 
And again, that's following on from that theme. We found these late medieval bricks, which kind of would have gone into a vaulted ceiling, like the example on this photograph. And again, sort of add a bit of um, suggestion that the priory's money was coming in at different stages during its life and bits could be added and um, they could kind of move with the times, if you like. So just um, on that, under the cloisters, I mean, we did find this survival here. Um, so you've got the north, the north wall of the church, the cloister alley, and then this bit of wall here with a little sort of internal wall coming off. Um, and then um, that's sort of shown here. So you've got this, if you imagine this being the other way, so you've got that internal piece of wall separating that root, those two rooms there, which is that piece of foundation there. And then this main kind of north-south wall, which is that bit there. Right, just to sort of a bit of, um, just to revise what we've kind of been through. So we're sort of adding to this conjecture here from the Mola conjecture. Um, and it's sort of, with the 2015 excavations, we've added this portico entrance and we're sort of focused on the western end of the church. We found this bit of south wall, this bit of north wall, these columns that separate um, the south aisle, the north aisle and then the nave. And then you've got the um, cloister alley here, which we've sort of um, found during this excavation. So this brings us into sort of 2019-2020 excavations, which on the western side of this, sorry, the eastern side of the viaduct, and we're focusing on the eastern end of the church. Um, and that's where we come in here with the 2019 excavations. One of the first parts we did in 2019 was we uh, revealed, which we think is the, which we know is the um, eastern end and the south wall of the church. And it's good, great survival because we've got this much later build on top, quite a late sort of post-med build, which became a property boundary in this part of Shoreditch. And um, if that property boundary allowed that wall to survive. Just try to um, bring in a bit more detail that we um, showing this south wall as we excavated it. And over the course of that 2019 excavation, we revealed a full sort of 20 meter long section of wall um, and the different elements along it. So I'm just going to focus on, on these two elements, this particularly being this uh, western end where we've got this late post-med blocking. So we think this would be in an open space and not a continuous wall. And at some point during the post-medieval period, it's been blocked in with chalk and brick and sort of various uh, masonry elements. And then just to sort of look at the main build of the wall, so we've got the foundation, which is chalk and gravel in sort of sandwich layers, and then some stone um, just to sort of start the foundation courses, um, continuing from the chalk. And then that starts into the wall itself, which is uh, predominantly Kentish ragstone, fairly roughly sort of made. Would it, whether it had been rendered, we're not sure, like in the, we'd seen in our 2015 excavations. And then just to sort of a little bit more, we think this has got to be sort of looked at a bit more closely, but we think the church ends round about this kind of area. And this wall that continues to the east towards Shoreditch High Street would have been a boundary wall between the um, outer precinct to the south and the inner precinct to the north. So it's been maybe described as a, a garden wall. I see it as a as a boundary wall between those two different areas of, of, of the Priory. So that's quite an interesting sort of change from the church to the, the Priory boundary. Um, and this is a bit more of a, an aerial view of that south wall. And then some of the, the elements during that excavation that we start to look at here. So we think we've got a north-south wall here with an east-west return, which we think is possibly the transept and then a wall coming off it and a chapel that's been added, a little cell to that, that north-south wall. So that, that's just um, showing um, the, these elements as, uh, you know, that we recovered, that were um, revealed during these 2019 excavation. And then there's a little bit of some um, sort of survival here that we'll look at, we'll look at later. And then there's that garden wall running through here, this, um, this, this precinct wall.
So on to the uh, 2020 excavations, which carried on um, from the south of that south wall. So there's now that south wall does survive and they constructed a pile wall to build this as part of the, the development, part of the building um, that's going to be built here. And this allowed us to sort of um, take um, do these excavations in 2020. And we started to reveal a bit more information about the transept and about some of these um, additional cells that were added to that south wall at this eastern end of the church. Um, and as we go on through this lecture, I'll, I'll show you some of these elements. So here's some photographs um, showing the things that were revealed during that 2020 excavation. This is looking south. Um, and there's several phases in these photos and at the moment there's preliminary phasing as we've not really drilled down on the post-ex process to really sort of unpick those that phasing so what we're looking at here is um, an inner chapel and then an outer wall constructed much later with a buttress coming off down here and then this outer wall and then this inner chapel so different it's already starting to see several phases of, of construction there and then these are identified by the robber cuts, probably from um, robbing carried out during the dissolution in 1539. And then the only things that survive is the chalk foundations and then stone foundations, which we think in the later phase. And then this is just another image looking southeast of this, this chapel with this later wall added with this buttress off to the, um, to the southeast. And then this is some phasing we've got here. Um, that's, this is sort of our very early stages of phasing. So phasing plans from the 2019-2020 excavation combine. And we've got this little chapel here that's added on to the, the, the transept and then the south wall. So this is probably from our 1190 church, um, that cruciform church identified by Mola, they're added to during the 2015 excavations and even further added to during these excavations. Um, in addition, we've got this little chapel on the um, eastern end of that of that transept. And we add to that with another chapel um, that's sort of added, probably is later than 1190, maybe even sort of additions round about the middle of the 14th century. Then this is, gets even more interesting with our later phase. So our inner sort of um, chapel has gone and this outer replaced by this much larger sort of outer wall, if you like, very late medieval, we think, um, with the foundations with these buttresses known as French buttresses, sort of round about 1400 onwards, these start to come in fashion during that kind of late medieval period. Um, we've question marked here whether this is Lord Lovell's chapel, um, this is going to be a uh, 15th, early 16th century edition, if it is. And um, he, he was quite important, potentially, in Hollywell Priory's life. He was Chancellor of the Exchequer at the time, and his thoughts have moved into the outer precinct and was potentially um, quite an important benefactor for that priory. But these um, interesting structural elements to the church, to the east of the transept, that um, but were revealed during our excavations. And it'd be interesting to find out really if this is Lord Lovell's chapel, but that is something for a later, a later, a later piece of work. So here we go, just a quick sort of look at this um, towards the far eastern side of the site, away from the church, we've got this boundary ditch. And this is defining the precinct along that edge. Um, quite a large ditch or quite a large um, well, it's a large segment of what would have been a large ditch um, and it's we believe it's medieval but I think we have to do a bit more work on that and probably had a bank along this side and then it was being filled in maybe as um, more land was acquired during the course of the Priory's life um, but at the moment this is yeah, it's quite a nice sort of defining eastern boundary ditch and then here we are the south wall again and we're starting to reveal a priory cemetery. So between that kind of transept, that eastern end of the church and towards Shoreditch High Street, we're getting an area of cemetery and that was revealed in the 2019 excavations along this south wall 
into this um, in a in an outer precinct wall. And there is our cemetery, our overview with about 200 skeletons exhumed, sort of Christian burials, kind of east west, um, a range of different ages, male and female. At the moment, we haven't done much post text work, so we do need to kind of look at that in a bit more detail. And um, we'll say we'll see, talk about the results in due course. This is just a quick um, overview of that cemetery. One of the things that was quite common was where, because the cemetery is probably in use for about 300 years, we've got a um, individual who's been buried, but when they put that grave in, they disturbed an earlier grave, and rather than put it, uh, rebury it in a different area, they've decided just to lay it on the legs of this uh, particular individual. So a bit of sort of earlier grave disturbed by later burials and then managed in this way. Um, then, we're looking at quite a, an age range. So this is a very young child, about seven years old, and then um, an even younger child of six months to one year. So most the adults, but there are children. So maybe we're starting to look at not just nuns buried here, but the wider community um, from Hackney and Shoreditch during the medieval period. And then a bit of pathology, just to sort of close up on this lower arm of this particular individual has had a, a break which has healed and there's a slight misalignment, which is why it's got that sort of swelling on the arm like that. And then just a bit of status. I mean, we've got burial, we've got these chapels, which I've talked about earlier, and these are three burials within that within that chapel. So um, quite possibly higher states individuals getting a much better burials plot within a chapel rather than being in the general cemetery with with everybody else um, that's quite an interesting element to this excavation a bit more about this sort of status in terms of how these um, bodies were treated i mean this is in the south transept we did have um, coffin nails aligned around the bodies but no survival of timber this does seem to have some survival of that timber and this individual, unfortunately, the coffin is flooded, so the bones have moved, and that's why they're in this kind of um, mi sort of mixed position where they've raised by the water and then dropped like that. So that explains that. Um, and then there's a burial, some grave goods on some of these burials, not very common for the medieval period, but in this particular case, we've seen things like um, there's a small coin on the teeth of the lower jaw. Um, in this case, we're having lead parcels placed in the graves by the mourners, and this, there's three examples of this. This is one of the better ones, um, where the, we believe a um, piece of parchment with a prayer or um, something written in Latin, perhaps, is, is placed and folded with inside that lead, and then it's placed within the grave as, a, a, as something that the mourners um, are trying to convey um, through that through that item and here we have um, a burial of a priest with a um, mortuary chalice over by its right shoulder um, and that's why we know it's a priest there's several examples of this so in the church the priest is say uh, will take mass um, in the priory um, it has to be a, a male priest to do that and then um, this is the sign of, um, of, of when the priest is buried, he's, he's buried, often buried with this uh, mortuary chalice, which is laid pewter. And there's a close up of the mortuary chalice that was found on another burial um, in 2015 on the excavations we did um, in that part of the church. We did find a priest with this particular example of this chalice, um, originally in silver, but then replaced by lead or pewter when, when the um, burial takes place. And there we have a buckle um, from an item of clothing here found on the hip of this individual. And then again, that lead parcel, just a bit more close up of that so you can just see how that looks. A finger ring found on an individual uh, buried in the South Transit. So again, a sort of suggestion of status here, quite a nice item of jewelry. And then devotional objects. 
one here we've got which is a the double cross and then the crucifix so it just reminds us we are in a in a religious building um we're on a religious site and then a little bit of sort of a nice ivory pin got a nice little um, small find there, and then an annual brooch um and then here just a kind of general overview uh, just to sort of sum up really so we started with our molar conjecture um, which had this cruciform church and then we've added to that so this is what they found a little bit of that north wall a little bit of that south wall a bit of those columns and then here we've really sort of added to that whole overall um, view of the um, of the church so we've expanded on this information we've revised that model set by Mola especially at this eastern end with our portico entrance and then the Westminster tiles and then the western end with our chapel and our bit of transept and then this sort of nice piece of wall here and then there's got this just a sort of quick reminder where we are of the cemetery area and then the boundary ditch over to the east and then just to end this is a Wingard's panorama of London 1540 with our, our Priory Church nicely sort of represented there. Thank you. That's um, hope you enjoyed that lecture.